You know, I want to tell you something. The Department of Education doesn't run education at all. The main universities are in control of education, and the, the science communicators, as places like Fermilab, they crush any dissent as to what they is the dogma. These are the particles that were found at Fermilab over 10 years ago. The black one and the glowy one. This one has no mass and a ton of energy. And this one has all the mass and it's just, it's, it's fixed. It doesn't do anything. It has a glowy edge, case closed. We found the same particles at the same time. And I contacted Fermilab about this and they have me blocked. I cannot comment about this because we use light instead of the gigantic particles where they have to create these huge billion dollar devices and they just never get anywhere. They haven't gotten anywhere. We actually were able to do fission and fusion of these particles. When they are together, they are a photon. That's a photon of light. And it happens to be red light from a red pulsed laser. It's going that way. What happens? When it hits the Venturi, which is this device right here. All it is is a constriction. As the light accelerates, and yes, light does accelerate, it slows down, it is a particle, it creates a wave, I can show all these things, and you can see it right here, it's accelerating. The particle is actually literally pulling itself out of the wave, just like pulling itself out of the atmosphere with a, a sonic boom from a jet, push, pow, right through the sound barrier. Well, we're right, we're right through the light barrier. So we've accelerated light. No question about that. And right here, we created a sub-atomic nuclear explosion. Anytime you're below an atom, the core of the atom, you're sub-atomic, below atomic. That's what light is. Light makes atoms. A combination of light. Light is nothing more than two dipoles back to back. Bada boom, bada boom. Just like two bar magnets. And when they're held together like that, they're pretty damn tight. You can't rip those apart. Well, you can, but you, the only way you can do it is with a venturi or smashing them to bits or ripping them apart with a generator with a magnetic field forcing those electrons out into a collection device, which would be a battery. Let's take that case. And in that case, when they push these white particles into there, that battery gains no weight whatsoever. Zero. Because they have no weight. Well, you know, when I say zero, I mean, it's, it, you really can't measure. It's just almost immeasurable. It's just almost nothing there. And I, don't, I can't explain that, but it has a hell of a lot of energy. It's like a bubble. It's like a balloon, a filmy balloon. And they can get big, as this one is, or they can get small if they're not being impacted. This one's being impacted. Now, what did we do? We separated those. That is creating electricity. That is electricity when it's sitting by itself. And guess what? It's sitting all by itself here. If we could harvest that right here, because we created fission, which is the black has been separated from the white, only the white is allowed, and then it came back together here, fusion. Right away, they joined back together. So I don't think there's any danger to, do, to doing this. We're only working with light, which is the smallest part. It hits you all the time. And by the time you're this far away from the Venturi, they're all back together again. They start to re recombine, as you can see here. And by some time way out here, or an inch or two later, they're, they're just, there is no separate white and no separate black. They're back together. Now, fission, fusion, raw electricity, nothing added to create that division, that subatomic nuclear explosion. Muon neutrinos, electron neutrinos. These are the white ones, electron showers. Muon goes sterile. This is, and I'm not allowed to comment at Fermi, I've been blocked there for 10 years. And I know who the, the guy that did it is Don Lincoln. And he's the one that put all this, that's his from him. And that's his here too, about Dirac neutrinos. They were looking for neutrinos. Once they, I discovered this, their funding would have been chopped. So who gets chopped? I got chopped. These are what they show 
electron showers, high energy. This is where we could get free energy. And the muons bang in and they bounce back. These come through and create enormous amounts of energy increase. That's the, well, here's what they show. As it comes through, once they hit that venturi, that's energy, that means energy. It goes from this amount of energy zip, up to that amount of energy. Same thing here, as the number of showers come through. The electrons are, you know, there's enough of them coming through. And they get bigger and bigger and bigger as they get close to the venturi. And once they go through the venturi, that well, at the venturi. Now, if we can harvest them right there, we just harvested this much energy compared to this much energy. Or actually, this is energy. It's the same thing, though. It's just that the number of electrons means the number of energetic particles. And we have them way up here instead of way down here. If we can harvest them up here, and we started with only this much, we could put plenty back in here to keep it going and just keep sucking off all this extra. That's what generation of electricity is all about. We just did it for free. And this little device, you could carry it around in a lunchbox. See, we started with electrons and muons, electron neutrinos. And they go from 100 giga electron volts to trillions of electron volts. They've been starting with proton protons and they had hadrons and beam collisions and explosions and particles and this and that, just garbage. And then out of that, they pull off some neutrinos and anti-neutrinos and then they get these high energies. But we're started with what they wanted to get down to so they could put them into their little machine. We got them just spitting them out right one right after the other. This is the problem with education. It's not allowed if it doesn't mimic the echoes that they hear in these ivy covered walls. You don't say what they say, you're done. Okay, these are experiments from the light research I did with Rod Warren over in Australia. And this is pulsed red laser, not accelerated. This is in the acceleration phase because of the venturi. This is the Higgs fields coming out of the venturi towards us. These are more Higgs fields. That is the actual photon. That's blue light slowing down as it filters through. Now I have a bunch of information about this and I can show that we can separate the black from the white which is which is called the Dirac neutrino and you rip the white away and the white has all the energy and no mass and the black has all the mass and is strictly a carrier it's a pusher it's a it's the massive part of everything we have dark matter in us because that's dark matter and it's gravity it sucks in the white matter everything has white matter so it sucks to the earth which is pretty much saturated with dark matter has more more dark matter than it has white matter. That's why you have gravity. It's being pulled to that black matter. That's the earth. The white is you see it. It's three layers is white and it goes to the earth. That's what electricity is. The white being sucked to the black. I have extreme amounts of information on this and we created fission fusion photons showing them exactly like they were shown at Fermilab. This is from Fermilab, this is from us. We started with tiny particles, they had started with gigantic billion dollar particles. We started with free particles, which just out of a little red laser, pulse red laser, through a tiny little venturi, and out came this. And you can see this with complementary metal oxide semiconductor silicate cell phones. You can see that, not only can you see that, with the right app, you can see what's in space, and this is what's in space, and I have no, no way to account for this. Because every time you see a bright spot or a dark spot, you have a dipole. These are all little dipole things out there. What they are, I do not know. And that is on top of our moon. And this is... I have no idea. Now... These are the things that are not allowed to be seen because, I, I mean, I've been sending these to all the universities, to all the space agencies, nobody will return a call, nothing, zero. 
because it, it upends everything they've been talking about. I see them commenting on this. I know they're getting them because I see it coming all the time. They're getting a little closer to trying to change things so that it makes it look like they discovered something and I finally did this. This is this was from my work. This is not. This is about electrons. They don't work with electrons. They work with protons, big smash things, and they, all they have is garbage. This was from what I showed. They're showing it from CERN, yes. But I actually discussed our Venturi and all that stuff with the people from University of Geneva. I went there for particle physics. I didn't go to there physically. I did it online through Coursera. And I discussed what we were doing. I showed them that we were using um, CMOS, the complementary metal oxide semiconductor silicates, to view this. And at the time, they said, no, it's impossible. You destroy the semiconductors. You can't do that. I said, no, we're using light. You guys are using big chunks. So when they break their chunks up and smash, they hit their semiconductor stuff with this. Dead, done, killed. We hit it with this, which is exactly what you do when you shine the light at something. It's this. It's not a this. You're not throwing hand grenades. You're throwing light. That's why we could see it, and CERN did upgrade to use CMOS. And I'm sure it's because of what I told them. I said, you can use it. There's no question you can use it. You just can't use it with the, these gigantic particles. Now, what they did was they put filters on somehow to take out the big pieces before it finally hit the, the, the uh, CMOS. And the only way you can see this stuff is with CMOS. If you use the other things they had, they were getting observer effect, which means they're putting energy in or taking energy out to observe something. They're not just looking. We're just looking because we're, this light would just pass right past us and go into no, Never Never Land if it wasn't for the CMOS banging into the CMOS. So we are not affecting this outcome whatsoever. We're just watching it. And, uh, and I've been blocked from Fermilab for 10 years and called names. If what I just showed you is correct and you get that enormous increase in energy here, which I think you do, we could use this, a box like this, which is just an old Geiger counter, but it shows you could have any kind of energy you want coming out of here. It's a strictly raw energy. And you have a bunch of these little lasers in here shining through Venturi's, picking up on the other side with th these new perovskites. They use thin film, different transition metals to absorb the frequencies, and then they just push them right down into batteries, just send them out to do whatever you like, carry it around. You know, there's no plug required to go into the grid or some, any big heavy-duty equipment, little tiny lasers, and you should be able to feed back into that laser and just keep it going virtually forever. The rest you could use any device you want and then send it back to ground. All they, this white, only thing it wants to do is get back to the black. All right, so once it comes through here, it goes through the device and it comes back to ground. You have that the floating ground. It's a little. This it's it's not complicated at all. They do this all the time, uh, but it's a little more than I can do. So we need a couple of engineers, a little bit of you know stuff. A few thousand dollars. You could do this in a week and no one way or the other. Are you going to get excess energy here or not? If you get ex excess energy, well, we're golden. And as far as the determination of all that they show. It says you will get gobs of energy Zzzz, right through the roof. That means energy, that you. And that's the venturi. Pew. That's when you get showers, base trap, shower, maximum layer, zoom. That's right after you come through the venturi. And you should be able to carry that around like a little tiny backpack or whatever. It's, it's, it, and it should be safe and, and uh, I don't think it can hurt you, but, you know, unless you get in between the, 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 you know, like you get electrocuted, certainly. Okay, my outstanding friends, I just did a piece on the change coming in academia because Trump is closing the Department of Education, which sort of mandated certain things that had to be done in order for you to be considered educated. And one of them was to suppress any dissent, which is just any literally thinking. 
This is, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about physics this time. It, the last time it was more of the, of the mud fossil business, which destroys history, destroys our true everything about it, about God and everything else. They don't want any of that stuff known. And also, physics is controlled by the physics laboratories that they want to work with these huge particles so they can confuse everything and make it so complicated that they can fund billions and billions and billions of dollars every year. Now, for the last 10 years, I've known about the neutrinos. I've shown them. I've shown the Higgs fields, the neutrinos, sterile muons, electron showers. I've been blocked by Fermilab, by virtually everybody. Fermilab has me completely blocked. The rest of them just don't respond and they don't want to know anything about it and, and the average population defers to these people with these big factory machines and things you don't need that you just need a laser and a venturi i will show you exactly what we did accelerated light created fission and fusion of subatomic particles much more than any other laboratory has ever done on earth ever for almost nothing. And if you think I'm wrong, I want to know why you think I'm wrong after you see the evidence. You have to see the evidence. Don't just start laughing. All right, so this is, I got to be honest with you, this sort of stuff has, has turned me a little bit sour. Well, not sour. <laughs> you can't put up with this forever. They could, just, they could just crush you like a bug. Velikovsky was one of the most intelligent people on the face of the planet. And they destroyed him his whole life. And the same thing they did with Tesla, the same thing they do with anybody that is will not conform to their mold. And I am damn sure I'm never going to conform to that mold. I have the evidence. You don't want any evidence? Then you're just another one of them, as far as I'm concerned. You know, Trump is closing the Department of Education. I don't really have a problem with that because they, they didn't do their job. So he's going to close it and put it back to the states. Now, will the states do their job? We're going to find out.